Imagine this. You're reading the Washington Post in 1973 and you come across this story. $1.5 billion secret in sky. It's about the accidental disclosure of the top secret National Reconnaissance Office, whose spy crafts are used by the CIA, NSA, and the White House. But here's the interesting part. In the article is a comment from Senator William Proxmire that the money from the projects, quote, flows to defense contractors such as Lockheed, the principal company behind so-called black satellite programs. Lockheed Skunk Works is responsible for the development of stealth fighters and more exotic projects like the Cormorant craft and mini fusion reactors. Steve Justice, former director for advanced systems there, now serves as COO for Tom DeLonge's To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. You probably know TTSA from the videos of unidentified aerial phenomena it published with the New York Times in 2017. Justice suggested in an interview one objective of TTSA was to reverse engineer technology recovered from UAPs or UFOs. So, have defense contractors been doing the same thing? We have no declassified proof, but it is a reasonable question. Consider the following. We know the Air Force has jurisdiction over technology developed by Skunk Works and other defense contractors. Declassified files also prove the Air Force oversaw Project Moondust, a space debris retrieval group that on at least one occasion recovered a metallic disc that crashed in Nepal. When digging through declassified CIA papers on black spy projects, we came across something odd concerning Antarctica. In this video, we'll take you through the paper trail. We're a new channel covering under-the-radar declassified files like this. Subscribe to join us. Buried in that Washington Post piece is something else. A quote from the late Alan Ellender, President Pro Tempore of the U.S. Senate, its second highest ranking member. Quote, If you knew how much money we spend and how much money we waste in this area, it would knock you off your chair. Ellender said in reference to black budget programs. He oversaw Senate funding for the intelligence community at the time. As the Post writes, Ellender was one of the few members of Congress privy to some of government's best-kept intelligence secrets. Fifty years later, we now have some idea what those secrets were. A CIA study, now declassified, reveals one intelligence officer briefed Ellender on a complex technical collection system. Another document, a journal entry from 1971, shows the agency's intent to brief Ellender on, quote, certain special projects. This issue comes up as part of a broader discussion on space research. A memo from that same time shows a CIA official spoke with a staff member of the Senate Appropriations Committee about unnamed, sensitive projects. Their discussion is curious. The file shows both men were carefully strategizing how to bring the special projects up to Ellender. Remember, the senator was a well-known fiscal conservative who openly expressed dissatisfaction with wasteful spending in black projects. This probably explains the caution. Another CIA memo confirms this. It's written, the director wants the projects presented to Ellender in a way that doesn't create an adverse reaction. What were they working on? Nothing is confirmed. All we have are clues, but they do tell us more. For one, the memo states the projects were of much more importance to the Department of Defense than to the CIA itself. The DOD oversees the National Reconnaissance Office, but also the Navy, Air Force, and Army. The DOD also manages DARPA, which works on its own experimental aircraft. Is it possible the secretive projects had something to do with this? Perhaps, but there's something else. In October of that year, Allender met with the CIA director and officials from the National Photographic Interpretation Center. The senator was shown pictures of something that's redacted. Six weeks later, something unique happens. It's revealed Allender is going to Antarctica by mid-December. We reviewed Ellender's entire file. This is his only visit to the continent. There's some noteworthy background here. A memo from the head of the NPIC states the senator wants his camera winterized for the trip, but the Navy recommended against it. Instead, the Navy would give him his own cameras and photography equipment to use there. Ellender had a history of photography in his travels, seemingly always with his personal camera, files show. So the Navy's insistence he used their gear stands out. It has two reads. Either they wanted to control his access to photography in Antarctica, or they simply wanted to save him the trouble of winterization. We don't know, but here are some more details. On December 14th, Allender was reportedly considering canceling his trip, but by December 16th, he decided to go. On December 21st, Allender had left, but we get something else of note in a partially redacted journal. 
The same staffer who learned of sensitive projects before Ellender briefed the senator on the redacted case. All we get here is that Ellender expressed interest and compassion for redacted and asked about his physical and mental condition. It is unknown what this was. It could have been anything from a POW situation to a black project to something concerning Antarctica. Given he was due to leave immediately after, it's possible the latter was the case, but there's no way to know. There's some more details here, though. On December 30th, the CIA director was sent a briefing that included an update on Ellender. It states the senator had no station contact with the agency thus far in his travels to and from the Antarctic. They wrote agents weren't to seek him out, but to be helpful if they ran into him. The obvious question is, what was the senator doing? Operation Deep Freeze is a code name for a series of U.S. missions in Antarctica, beginning with Deep Freeze 1 in 1955, followed by Deep Freeze 2, 3, and so on. By the 1970s, when Ellender went, this had become a general term for all U.S. operations on the continent, including resupply to various Antarctic bases coordinated by the military. A throwaway line in a New York Times story writes he went to inspect multiple deep freeze facilities on the continent, though no more details given. One CIA file mentions Ellender is suspicious a staff member of his was leaking information to the press, so it's possible that's how the Times obtained the info. But we're beginning to get an interesting picture here. Documents confirm Ellender was in the know when it came to secretive military projects. They also show he was fiscally conservative and was concerned with wasting money on them. Is it possible Ellender went to Antarctica to investigate a black project taking place at one of the deep freeze facilities? Yes. The Times wording that he was there to inspect is something notable. This suggests there was something there he wanted to look at. Let's play devil's advocate though. Could he simply have gone to investigate normal scientific studies of the continent that are still ongoing? Yes, that's also possible. Though one would wonder why the senator would travel to the bottom of the world for something so benign. The reality is we don't have any definitive answers. One can look at the sum of this and draw different conclusions, but it's a story that has gone untold until now. The facts, his intimate knowledge of secretive projects, the Navy's desire to provide him with their own cameras, and the CIA's interest in this trip are in the declassified files. We just can't be sure how all of these pieces fit together, considering some information still isn't public. Consider this though, we read thousands of pages pertaining to Ellinger held by the CIA, and we found just one formerly classified as top secret, the highest level of secrecy. This came after Ellender returned from his trip. Most of the meeting is redacted. But there is this line, redacted demonstrated a model of the redacted vehicle. Ellender warns the CIA director to be aware of concealed intelligence expenditures. Unfortunately, that's all we have. The senator passed away on July 27th of 1972. We don't know if his trip to Antarctica is connected to his insider knowledge of secret projects, but this is one of the first times there has been evidence in the public record suggesting a potential link. Or we could just be reading too much into this. Let us know what you think in the comments. Though we can't provide a definitive conclusion, Senator Ellender is one that deserves to be remembered by history to a greater degree. Through our view of his records, it becomes clear that he was a rare politician who was fiscally conservative and against war. On many occasions, he expressed his desire for peace with the USSR during the Cold War. All relevant documents are linked below. Consider supporting our work on Patreon or through our Audible referral links below. See you next time.